morning. Welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 35. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's lesson is about factoring and canceling. So we've already learned how to factor the greatest common factor, and you're going to use that in today's lesson. But first of all, let's look up here at this first blue equation that I have. 4x equals 20. We're used to seeing something like this. How do we get our x by itself? We do the opposite, right? And the opposite of multiplying 4 times x is what? Dividing. And so that cancels out our 4. You could also say it reduces the 4 to a 1, which sometimes can be helpful so that you're not confused thinking that the 4 becomes a 0. It actually becomes a 1. So it reduces to a 1 or it factors out. And so you're left with x on this side and 20 divided by 4 is 5. And that's something that we're used to doing. Well, now we want to do similar things. So if you're looking at this, x plus 4 over 4, you might think, oh, well, I have two 4s. So I can factor this out. I can reduce this 4 to 1. It would be x plus 1 over 1, so x plus 1. Wrong. Uh, uh. You can't do that. Okay, the reason that you cannot do that, you cannot uh, cancel these fours, is that you can only cancel factors. You can only cancel numbers or letters that are being multiplied. You see here, this is x plus four, not x times four. So you can't cancel it. But look over here at this one. 4 times x plus 1. So your factors are 4 and x plus 1. So this is one term, one factor. Another term, another factor. Now I can cancel. I can reduce this 4 to 1. And it becomes x plus 1. That will work. Okay? So let's look at a couple more examples. Here I have 4 times a minus 3 divided by 4. 4 is a factor and a minus 3 is a factor. So I can reduce that 4 to 1. I can cancel out my 4 in this problem. So it becomes 1 there. So this equals whoops, a minus 3. Mm, I'm going to write that a little better. Hang on one second. turned out. Okay, so this equals a minus 3 as your answer. Okay? I'm going to put this in parentheses so I separate it from my next problem. Okay, look at this problem. 3 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. Well, here your terms are 3 and x minus 2, and then here I have x minus 2 is a term. So I can cancel this whole term because it matches. The whole thing being multiplied is x minus 2. I'm not um, canceling something that's being just subtracted. I'm canceling the whole factor, the whole term that's being multiplied. And so I'm left with just 3. Okay? How's it going? You feel like you understand? All right, let's take it up a notch. So here I have... 3p plus 3 divided by 3. Right now, my terms are 3p plus 3 and 3. I don't have anything that I can factor because I don't have any factors up here. The 3p is part of plus 3. So there's nothing, there are no factors individually that are common with 3. However, if I factor my numerator, 3p plus 3, let's see what happens. What's the greatest common factor of 3p and 3? 3, right? I can divide both of those parts of my, fact, or my term by 3. So I get 3p divided by 3 is just p. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I have 3 times p plus 1 over 3. Now I can reduce my 3 to 1. And 
so my final answer is P plus one. All right, let's keep going. Let's try a couple more. 3x minus 9x squared over 3x. Right now, I have nothing individual that I could factor out. I can't factor out 3x until in 3x because it's subtracting. It's not actually a factor yet. So I need to create factors. What is my greatest common factor for 3x and negative 9x squared? 3x, that's right. So I'm going to set this up. 3x is my greatest common factor. 3x divided by 3x is 1. Negative 9x squared divided by 3x would be negative 3x over 3x. Now these are my common terms. So I'm left with 1 minus 3x. Okay, let's move on to the next one. 5x minus 25x squared over 5xy. Okay, so let's start with the top. What's my greatest common factor for 5x and negative 25x squared? 5x, right? So that's my greatest common factor. It goes on the outside. 5x divided by 5x is 1. Negative 25x divided by 5x is negative 5x. Okay, now look at this one right here, 5xy. Remember that these are oops, each individually being multiplied. So I could write that as 5 times x times y. So I could factor that out easily by just separating this as one term, 5x, and y as one term, like that, because it all means multiplication. This is the same as this, which is the same as this. I just grouped it so it's easier to separate. So I can cancel out my 5x, so I'm left with 1 minus 5x over y. Okay? All right, come back into the screen. Go ahead and pause now and do your practice. Okay, you should be back, We're ready to go. Letter A, you should have gotten one minus x. Letter B, x plus one. And letter C, one minus seven x. Okay, that's all that you have for this lesson, so go ahead and finish up by doing problem set 35. Have a wonderful day, guys. Let me know if you have any questions about this, okay? Bye.